Hello all, welcome back to a science class. Today we are going to learn about a new chapter, force, energy and simple missions. Okay, so chapter number 14, force, energy and simple mission. So let us learn about the mind map first. So what do you know about force? Whatever you are doing in your daily routine, you have to apply the force, is it not? Even if you are moving any object, you should apply some force, is it not? Yes. Now, force is a push or pull applied on an object. Push or pull applied on an object. Then, energy. Energy is the ability of a body to do work. What is energy? It's an ability. It is ability of a body to do work. Then simple mission. Simple mission is nothing but simple structured missions. So we are going to learn about different types of forces, different types of energy and different types of simple missions. Okay. So first about forces, mechanical force. First force is about mechanical force. What is mechanical force? The force exerted by a machine is called mechanical force. The force exerted by a machine is called mechanical force. So these are different types of mechanical forces like muscular force, elastic force, gravitational force, frictional force and then magnetic force and electrostatic force. So we are going to learn about different types of forces in this lesson. Next thing is about energy. As I said energy is the ability of a body to do work. So we are going to learn about different types of energy like light energy, heat energy, sound energy, electrical energy, mechanical energy, solar energy, hydro energy, and wind energy clear yes next thing is about different types of simple missions different types of simple missions what are they liver what is this liver it is used to lift heavy materials or to cut objects then pulley second thing is about pulley that is they are groom wheel they have a groom wheel and a rope Third one is inclined plane. Inclined plane. Fourth one is screw. Fifth is wedge. Sixth is wheel and axle. Clear? Yes. Now let us learn about all these things in detail. Yes, children. Now let us start with the topic that is force, energy, and simple mission. So, as I said, what do you mean by force? Force is the push or pull applied on an object. It is a push or pull applied on an object. Okay, so we apply force on different objects. For what? To lift or to move or open or change their shapes. I repeat, we apply force on different objects to lift move open or change their shapes clear force can cause following effects so what are those effects it can move a stationary object it can move a stationary mean to say the, uh, the position of an object will be at rest that's what stationary object so if you are applying this force automatically the stationary objects will move okay when you push or pull a toy car on the floor it starts moving it starts moving automatically if you are applying force it starts moving then second property is it can change shape of an object second effect is it can change shape of an object what is this when you squeeze toothpaste tube the shape of the tube changes is it not if you are just 
squeezing out all the toothpaste contents from the tube, automatically the shape of the tube will get reduced, it gets changed, is it not? Yes, that's what it can change shape of an object, clear? Next thing is, it can slow down or stop a moving object. It can slow down or stop a moving object. When you put your hand in front of moving toy car, it stops. So force is also used to stop the force, stop the movement, to slow down the movement. Okay, when you put your hand in front of moving toy car, it stops. That is because of force. Then it can change the direction of moving thing. It can change the direction of moving thing. When you hit a ball coming towards you, imagine if a ball is coming towards you. See, you can see here if this ball is coming towards us and if I am hitting this ball automatically, if I am hitting with a bat, the direction of this ball changes. It will come towards the opposite direction. Is it not? Yes. When you hit a ball coming towards you and your back, the direction of the ball changes. That is because of this force. So as I said, students, force can move a stationary object, force can change the shape of an object, force can slow down or stop a moving object and force can change the direction of the moving thing. Clear? Yes. So these are the basics about force. Next, let us proceed by learning types of forces. What are the different types of forces we are going to learn? So first about mechanical force. What is that? Mechanical force. So what do you mean by mechanical force? The force exerted by a machine is called mechanical force. The force exerted by a machine exerted by a machine is called mechanical force. For example, the engine of a train generates a large amount of mechanical force. What happens? The engine, the engine of the train generates a large amount of mechanical force that, so only with that force, that force enables to pull the coaches attached to it. Is it not? The engine will be attached with so many coaches in the train. Is it not? So all the coaches are further able to move only because of the force which is driven by this, by this engine. Energy. Okay. The engine of the train generates a large amount of mechanical force that enables to pull the coaches attached to it. Now we are going to learn about the different types of mechanical forces. So all the following are mechanical forces. So the first thing which comes under the mechanical force is muscular force. What is that? Muscular force. What do you mean by that? The force exerted by the action of muscles. The force exerted by the action of muscles is said to be as muscular force. So for example, while pulling a cart, while pulling a cart or when you are just uh, pulling a string of bar, okay, in that time you will be using this muscular force, clear? Yes. The second type of the mechanical force is elastic force. What is that? Elastic force. What do you mean by this? The ability of a material to return to its original shape ability of a material to return to its original shape say for an example you might be knowing about rubber band is it not yes it has elastic nature so the ability of a material to return to its original shape after being stretched after being stretched or compressed is said to be as elasticity okay or else it's also said to be as elastic force so we have learned about mechanical force and two types of mechanical force that is muscular force and elastic force clear children yes about the elastic force that is when an elastic material is stretched or compressed it exerts elastic force for an example 
you can see a rubber band here if it is stretched or compressed it is coming back to its original position is it not so that's what elastic force next thing is about gravitational force what is this the earth pulls all object towards itself with a force pulls all object towards itself with a force said to be as gravitational force it is directed downwards towards the center of the earth what is this it is directed downwards towards the center of the earth for example when a ball is thrown upwards when a ball if it is thrown upwards automatically again it's coming down is it not when a ball is thrown upwards it comes down after some time and this is because of this gravitational force clear children yes now the next thing is about frictional force what is this frictional force the force that causes moving things to slow down and stop is called frictional force moving things to slow down and stop there is a force said to be as frictional force for example a ball rolling on the ground comes to stop after some time rolling on the ground comes to stop after some time that is because of this frictional force next thing is about disadvantages of this friction okay the heat produced due to friction between the moving parts of a machine may cause harm to machine i repeat the heat produced due to friction between the moving parts of a machine may cause harm to machine harm to machine so this is one of the disadvantage next thing about advantages of friction there are so many advantages like friction help us to walk only because of the presence of friction we are able to walk without it we would slip is it not without the frictional force we would slip if you try to even even if you are trying to walk we will feel we will just we would slip that is because of this frictional presence of this frictional force if it is not there automatically we would slip okay then because of the friction between a pencil and paper that allows us to write is it not that is also one example so these are advantages of friction next thing is about magnetic force what is that magnetic force so the materials that get attracted to a magnet you have noticed that uh safety pens if you are just keeping over to that and if a magnet is placed over to that automatically it will come and attract towards the magnet is it not yes the materials that get attracted to a magnet is said to be as magnetic material and the force exerted by a magnet is said to be as magnetic force the force exerted by a magnet is called as magnetic force clear children yes next thing is about electrostatic force what is that electrostatic force so to understand about this electrostatic force what you have to do just shred a paper into tiny pieces just make it into tiny pieces then take a comb and rub it with your dry hair take a comb and rub it with your dry hair okay and then now bring the comb closer to pieces of paper you'll be having in the other hand some pieces of paper now you have rubbed the comb with your dry hair okay some heat will be there in the comb is it not now if you are just keeping the paper that uh, shred paper if you are keeping those paper near to the comb what will happen the paper pieces get attracted and stick to the comb is it not the paper pieces get attracted and stick to the comb and that is because of this electrostatic force that is electrostatic force clear children yes now as of now we have learned gravitational frictional and then magnetic and electrostatic force yes children now let us learn about the second part that is energy 
So what do you mean by energy? Energy is the ability to do the work. Is it not? Energy is the ability of a body to do work. Okay. We all need energy to do work. To do work we need energy. Is it not? Yes. Energy can take many forms. There are different types of energy. So we are going to learn about one by one in detail. It can be transferred and stored. That is energy can be transferred and stored. From one form to another form it can be transferred and it can be stored also. So let us learn one by one. That is first one is light energy. What is that? Light energy. What do you mean by light energy? The sun, a burning candle and a light bulb produce light energy. Okay, all these things will produce light energy. So, light energy help us to see things. In which way it is useful to us? To see all the things. We need light. Is it not? So, light energy is useful to see things. Clear? Next thing is about heat energy. What is that? Heat energy. Our hands start getting warm when we bring them closer to your burning candle. Is it not? If a burning candle is there and if you are just keeping your hands near to that, our hands will feel warm. Is it not? This is the effect of heat energy given out by the candle. That is because of the heat energy which is coming out from the candle. Is it not? Yes. So that's what about heat energy. Yes children, now let us learn about sound energy. So what is sound energy? Many objects such as musical instruments, firecrackers and aeroplane produce sound energy. Is it not? Yes, they produce sound energy. It is produced when an object vibrates. It is produced when an object vibrates. Clear children? Yes. Next thing is about electrical energy. What is this electrical energy? We use electrical energy to run electrical appliances such as bulb, tube light, fan, radio, television, computer and refrigerator. Clear children? Yes. So we are using this energy when we are using these bulb, tube light, fan and all. Is it not? Yes. So this is what about sound energy and electrical energy. Next thing is about mechanical energy. What is this mechanical energy? It is the energy processed by an object due to its motion or its position. Okay. So because of its movement or because of its this position, we are able to, uh, an energy is getting processed. So that energy is said to be as mechanical energy. For example, a moving, a moving vehicle has mechanical energy due to its motion. So because of the movement, it is having one mechanical energy. Then this type of mechanical energy is said to be as kinetic energy. What is that? Kinetic energy. Next thing is about a stretched bar possesses energy due to its stretched position. Due to its stretched position. It gains one energy. Okay. So that energy is said to be as potential energy. What is that? Potential energy. So as of now, we have learned different types of energy. What is energy? And different types of energy like light energy, heat energy, sound energy, electrical energy, mechanical energy and all. Is it not? Yes. Yes children. Now, let us learn about solar energy. So what is solar energy? The sun is a source of solar energy. Is it not? We are getting solar energy from sun. It is the most easily available and abundant source of energy. It is easily available energy. Is it not? Yes. Then it does not cause any pollution. It does not cause any pollution. 
solar energy is widely utilized to heat water cook food and generate electricity is it not it, this solar energy is used here to heat water cook food and to generate electricity clear so this is what about solar energy next thing is about hydro energy what is that hydro energy so what what do you mean by this word hydro hydro moving water possesses energy what is this moving water have some energy it can be transformed into electrical energy so this moving water is transformed into electrical energy clear yes so and that transferred energy is said to be as hydroelectric energy what is that hydroelectric energy so this hydroelectric energy is obtained from energy of moving water it's obtained from energy of moving water then the energy of moving water is used to move a paddle wheel that grinds the grain i repeat the energy of the moving water is used here okay for what to move a paddle wheel that grinds the grain so they are using this energy to grind the grain clear yes it is renewable non polluting source of energy it is renewable non polluting source of energy clear children yes so this is what about hydro energy yes children now let us learn about the next type of energy that is wind energy so what is wind energy wind is one of the most abundant source of energy abundant renewable and non polluting source of energy clear then it is used to produce electrical energy with the help of wind turbines so they are using here wind turbines and they are producing electricity by wind turbines okay wind turns the blades of a turbine which helps to produce electricity so wind is used here to turn the blade of wind turbine therefore they are producing electricity which helps to produce electricity so this is what about wind energy clear now let us learn about the next part that is machines okay so what is this machine so when we will be using the machines it will reduce the amount of energy and the time required to do the work is it not so why do you want to use this type of modern machines and all to reduce the amount of energy and the time required to do the work then we can do more work or lift heavy loads with less effort by the use of machines is it not so by using this we can use we can do more work and lift heavy loads easily then so there are some machines there are some types of machine is it to be uh, simple machines and complex machine what is that simple machines and complex machines so what do you mean by simple machines a few parts it has only few parts a few parts for example bottle opener and a pair of scissors a bottle opener and a pair of scissors so it has only few parts that's why it's said to be as simple machines clear then some machines have many parts have many parts that's why they they are said to be as complex machines they are arranged in a complex way they have many parts that's why they are said to be as complex machines then for example a crane and a sewing machine clear sewing machine so that's what about machines okay yes children now let us learn about simple machine so there are different types of simple machine there are six main types that is lever pulley screw inclined plane wedge wheel and axle 
Clear? So let us learn one by one. First about lever. What is this lever? Lever or used to lift heavy materials or to cut objects. What is the purpose? To lift heavy materials or to cut object. A lever is a long rod that is pushed or pulled against a pivot that is support in order to move or lift something. So here ultimately it's basically a, it a long rod. It's a long rod that is pushed or pulled that is either pushed or pulled against a support or a pivot in order to move or lift the objects or the particular material clear so this is what about lever so so generally the lever has three main parts what are those parts load effort and fulcrum load effort and fulcrum so what is load load is the object to be moved or lifted load is generally an object which has to be moved or lifted second thing is effort effort is the force effort is the force that is a push or a pull which is applied on the rod which is applied on the rod okay next thing is about fulcrum what is this fulcrum so what is this it's a pivot point and it is the fixed point about which the rod moves about which the rod moves is said to be a fulcrum so it's basically has three main parts load effort and fulcrum clear yes next thing is about the pivot produces the support against which the rod is pushed it produces a support against which the rod is pushed so basically there are three different types of lever that is class 1 class 2 and class 3 so first about class 1 lever in this class 1 lever fulcrum is placed in between load and effort fulcrum is placed in between load and effort for example a hammer a pair of pliers pliers and then a beam balance a beam balance then class 2 lever what is this class 2 lever here load lies in between fulcrum and effort load lies in between fulcrum and effort for example nutcracker nutcracker stapler and so many clear next thing is about class 3 that is third type of lever in this type of lever effort is in between fulcrum and the load effort is in between fulcrum and the load for example a fishing rod tweezers and all clear yes next thing is about pulley pulley what is this a pulley has a grooved wheel and a rope it has mainly two parts a grooved wheel and a rope two things rope and grooved wheel the groove is present around the rim of the wheel where it will be it is present around the rim of the wheel then the groove keeps rope in its place the groove will keep the rope in its place the object to be lifted whatever the heavy object what we want to lift using this pulley no that object is tied to one end of the rope it is tied with the rope and then force is applied to the other end by pulling it force is applied to the other end of the rope to just pull the object clear here when the rope is pulled downwards when the rope is pulled downwards the load is lifted upwards the load is lifted upwards so this is the opposite in direction clear yes this is what about pulley yes children now there are two different types of pulley what is that fixed and movable fixed and movable so what do you mean by fixed pulley the wheel is attached to a hook or a wall 
and spins at one fixed place it spins at one fixed place that's what it's said to be as fixed pulley for example we can pull down in order to lift something up we can pull down to lift up clear so this is what about fixed pulley next thing is about movable pulley movable pulley what is this the wheel moves with the load as the load is attached to pulley the wheel moves along with the load okay it moves along with the load as the load is attached to pulley then it is the pulley used to, to lift heavy engines and fit them into vehicles so these are some examples so basically there are two different types of pulley that is fixed and movable clear children yes yes children now we can see the picture for pulley that is here a person who is holding the rope is it not so the object is lifted with a rope on one side and other side uh, he is holding that he is just pulling over to that and here in this type of pulley the wheel is attached to the hook or a wall and it spins at one fixed place clear children yes this is what about pulley yes children now about the next simple machine that is inclined plane okay it's basically a slope what is that it's a slope it has no moving parts it's simply a slope which helps to move heavy objects okay what it will do it will it is helping to do it is helping to move heavy objects from higher to lower surfaces and vice versa clear yes next thing is about one of the inclined plane that is said to be as ramps what is that ramps which is provided in hospital which is used to carry wheelchairs and stretchers which is used to carry wheelchairs and stretchers next thing is about screw what is that screw screw is wrapped spirally around a cylinder the shape of the screw will be like a cylinder it's wrapped spirally around a cylinder it is used to hold things together what is the purpose of screw it is used to hold things together it has grooves cut into it and the one end of the screw is pointed how it will be the one end of the one end of the screw will be pointed while the other end has a groove while the other end has a groove you can see the picture for inclined plane okay and here ramp yes what is this inclined plane it's simply a slope it's just a slope clear it has no moving parts it's simply a slope which is used here to help which is used here to move heavy objects clear then this is what ramp what is this ramp can you see this ramp yes it will be there in hospitals which is used to carry wheelchairs and stretchers clear this is what ramp next thing is about wedge what is this wedge wedge is made up of two inclined plane what is that it is made up of two inclined plane one end of the wedge is thick how it will be it will be thick and blunt whereas the other end is narrow and short the other end of the wedge is narrow and short it can be used to cut and split the things the purpose is to cut and split the things clear children yes yes children now you can see the examples of wedge axe and razor what is this it is made up of two inclined plane that is one end of the edge is thick and blunt whereas the other end is narrow and short clear so it is used here to cut and split any things okay so another example is razor you can see the picture clear yes children now about the last part that is wheel and 
axle. This is one of the simple machine. It consists of a large wheel which is connected to small cylindrical rod called axle. What is that? It is connected to a small cylindrical rod called axle. These two are at the center so that they move together. There may be two wheels joined to the axle at opposite ends. There may be two wheels which is joined to axle at the opposite ends. So when the axle is turned, the wheel also moves. Based on the movement of axle, the wheel also moves. For example, when steering wheel of a car is turned, the effort is multiplied by the axle and the wheels move faster. I repeat, when steering wheel of a car is turned, when we are just turning out the steering wheel, the effort is multiplied. It is multiplied by the axle and then wheels also move faster along with the steering movement. Can you understand? Yes. So that's what about wheel and axle. Yes children, now we can see some examples for wheel and axle. Wheel and axle. What is this? Bicycle pedal. What is this? A screwdriver. What is this? A steering wheel. Is it not? Yes. Now, this bicycle pedal consists of a large wheel which is connected to a small cylindrical rod called axle. What is that? It is connected to a small cylindrical rod called axle. So, these two are the center so that they move together. They move together. Clear? Okay. Yes, children. Now, an activity. See, you should take a wooden scale and then a thick book and then a small piece of wood. Okay. Now, fix the wood on the ground. Okay. So, imagine this is a ground. So, here I have given a support. This is the wood. Okay. Now, place the book on one end of the ruler. So, one end of the side, one end of the scale has this book. Okay. Now, try to lift the book like this. Okay. Now, here, one end, I am just applying a force. An effort is given here. Is it not? The book is the load that has to be lifted. Clear children? The book is the load that is L that has to be lifted. The point at which the ruler touches the piece of wood that is here. The point at which the ruler touches the piece of wood is said to be as fulcrum. Clear? Then the force that we apply is called effort. It is E. It is E. So here the scale or the ruler helps us to lift the book. Helps us to lift the book. Here this scale acts as a lever. Can you understand? Yes. So this is what an activity about a lever and how it is helpful to carry the heavy loads. Yes children, now an activity for you all. What is that? Force can move a stationary object. Is it not? Force can move a stationary object. Then force can slow down or stop moving object. It can slow down or it can stop moving object. Force can change the shape of an object. It can change the shape of an object. Then force can change the direction of moving things. Is it not? If a ball is coming towards you, it can change the direction. So, you people are going to do an activity which proves the statement. You are going to do an activity, take a photocopy and forward it in your class email ID about this activity. Clear children? Yes. So with this, we have come to the end of this chapter. So after watching the video, just read the chapter thoroughly so that you can understand well. Clear children? Yes. Thank you all.